Uh, today's training is going to be on how to use chat GPT to come up with social media content, topics, uh, subject lines, and basically the framework for creating uh, social media content. So you never run out of stuff to put out there. So you can continue to build your brand online, build your brand on social media. And basically, I want you guys to just open up your brain to all the possibilities that you can do with chat GPT, because it's really a game changer. Um, you can like use it at a very basic level or you can go extremely deep with it. Just, it's really up to you. Um, but I want you guys to see like, there's no longer a reason why you cannot create content, right? Why you cannot uh, come up with topics. Because for a lot of people, there's two reasons why most people don't do social media content or video, right? What are the two reasons? Don't know what to post. Don't know what to post, right? That's probably one of them, right? And they're scared of being on camera. So confidence, right? Of being on camera, putting themselves out there and not knowing what to say because maybe they don't think they have enough value or information to put out there. Those are the two main things, right? So let's address the first one, the, the big one, right? It was just the fear, right? How do you get over your fear of being on camera and putting yourself out there? Keep repetitive just do it. repetition. You just do it, right? And I, you guys, I did a, uh, a reel the other day just talking about why, I don't know if you guys see it, right? It was really quick and that's basically it, right? Confidence comes from doing something over and over, messing it up, you know, doing it again, messing it up, doing it again, messing it up, doing it again, right? It's the same thing like when you're going to go handle your first, you know, listing or your first buyer transaction or anything like that, or you're going to run your first buyer console or listing presentation. Yeah, you're going to be nervous the first time you go out there, right? You're not going to be the most confident because you haven't done it enough, but you're going to go out there and you're going to do it and you might mess it up a little bit. And then you're going to learn from that. You're going to go back out there and do it again. And every single time that you do it, you get better and better, right? It's just like me up here speaking to all you guys. Um, when I first started doing these type of meetings and trainings, I was nervous, right? Um, and it wasn't even like uh, that. I didn't know what to say. I was just nervous of speaking in front of people, you know, but as I've done, like, our Tuesday meeting, I've been doing that for the last, last five years, every Tuesday, right? So it's like every time it just gets easier and easier and easier. And I'm able to come out there and like not worry about how I look or how I feel and just focus on me delivering a good meeting, right? So it's the same thing with you guys, right? If you want to get confident at doing video, you have to do video, right? You have to rip the bandaid off and just freaking do it and put yourself out there and you're going to mess up. That's just the bottom line. You're not going to like how you look on your first videos. You're going to critique it, but guess what? No one cares. No one cares how you sound. The only person that cares how you sound is who? You. Is you. Because no one knows, like, unless they know you on, like, on a personal level, like, if your boyfriend knows how you talk and then he sees you talk, yeah, that's not really how you talk, right? <laughs> but most people don't really know how you talk on an everyday basis, right? They know you, like, here and there when they see you. So no one is going to really care. It's only you that has like the biggest mental block in your head. Oh, I don't sound good. I, I messed up. I stuttered. I don't like how I look. I looked fat. I didn't like my shirt. It was wrinkled. There was a like, no one gives a shit. Dude. Just bottom line. Right. So I want to get that out of the, out of the way. Um, because I can't fix that. Right. I can't train you on how to be more confident. Um, that's only something that you can do on your own. Right. You got to go out there and just do it. And I promise you that if you take the journey of diving into this video stuff and doing that, it's going to make you better in every single part of the business. Because if you're comfortable on video, then that means you could be comfortable when you meet a client face to face. That means you could be comfortable coming up here and leading a training session. That means you could be comfortable on your buyer consoles. That means you can be comfortable talking to strangers that come into an open house, right? So by doing video, like on a, a consistent basis, you're actually practicing for when you're in front of a live client. And that's on you. That's on you guys, right? That's work that you guys have to do. Um, is that clear? Any questions on the confidence part? Right? Um, who in here, raise your hand, like if you think, yeah, I, I gotta get a little more confident, right? Putting myself out there on video. Um, then the question you gotta ask yourself is, are you doing it enough to actually get confident? Right. So that's the question there. Um, the second part of the equation, right, which is not knowing what to say. Sometimes confidence comes also or the insecurity comes from, well, I don't think I'm experienced enough to say something that is going to be valuable to someone. Right. 
value is subjective, right? Meaning something could be valuable to Mauricio and it's not valuable to Andre. Something could be valuable to Kayla and it, to Larry is like, yeah, that's whatever. I've seen that before, right? So you got to remember that when you're putting stuff out there on social media, you're making video content, it's not supposed to be for everyone. So you got to change your mindset where like, hey, this video has to sound like the best so that everyone can like it. And I get all kinds of likes and everyone starts DMing, DMing me saying, let's buy or sell a house. That's not the way it works. The only person that that video has to bring value to is whoever it applies to in that moment. So if you're making a video about first time buyers, it's only going to be valuable to a first time buyer who's watching your video. If you're making a video about staging your home for sellers, the buyers don't care about that, right? So it's not valuable to them. It's only valuable to someone who's considering selling their home. So you also got to get over that and stop thinking like my video has to be for everybody. Because if it's for everybody, then it's really for no one, right? Um, so get over it, guys. Just pick something that is relevant to your audience, right? Or to part of your audience, whoever your followers are or whoever you're speaking to, or if you're sending like a video to a bunch of leads that you have, just pick something that's gonna, that you think will be relevant to certain people you're trying to talk to and just go for it, right? And if, if, if it hits home with one person, if one person's like, man, that was good, then you did your job, right? Um, any questions, guys, on this so far? Does, this, does any of this resonate with people right now? Yeah. Tell me why. Why does it resonate with you? I find, oh, Go ahead. the reason I, I think it resonates with me is because like a lot of videos I do, you know, um, I do come to one subject. And so it's one of those things like there's a few people hit me up and they have direct questions about that one thing. Yeah. And it's not like they have other questions. Usually it's like something that was like, it wasn't brought up to them. So I'm sure it's like, if you have the chance to talk, there's more to show them. But being able to like master that subject and know that really well. And then like those clients just don't you because you know what you're talking about with that subject. Exactly. Yep. Good stuff. Who else had something? Uh, I feel like you're not you're not as experienced. Really got um, that's basically what I struggle with. Yeah. Since I don't have any experience, I don't want to post because I feel like I don't know anything. Yeah. Um, but that, that's something that I'm used to with. You just start posting content out there. And yep. And, and that's good that you brought that up, right? Um, what he said was. He's not as ex that experienced yet because he's new, right? So he doesn't want to post because he didn't feel that he's that experienced. Well, guess what? Even after you sold 20 or 30 homes, you're still not that experienced compared to someone that sold 100 homes, right? So it's not like you're going to get to a, a, a certain point and you're like, yeah, now I can start posting because I'm fucking badass, right? I'm, I've sold a million homes. So now I have permission to speak to the audience, right? That's not the way it works, right? So remember, if someone is following you on social media, that means that they chose to follow you out of the million people that they could follow, right? The millions of accounts on social media, they chose to follow you for a reason, either because they know you, they like you, they saw something on your page that resonated with them, they trust you, they're a friend, they're a family member, they're a colleague, they want to support your business, right? So if you just erase from your mindset, like I will start doing this when I get to this point, like if you just erase that, then you can like fast track your business a lot quicker. Right. right. Because let's say like, it takes you a year. You're like, well, I'm still new. So like in a year from now, after I've closed some deals, then I'll start posting. Well, why don't you start posting now and get a whole year advantage? Right. Right. So you do not have to be experienced. You do not have to sell any homes at all to get started today right? What you have to do is you have to go out there, research the information, make sure you've, you know, checked it out, make sure you know what you're saying, and then say it, right? That's it, right? And then also, what is your intention when you're posting something? If your intention is, hey, I researched this, I thought this was a good point, I thought this made sense, and I want to put this out there because I think it's helpful, well, then, then you can sleep at night, right? Because you know you're trying to help someone. Um, so, I think that's, that's a big mistake that a lot of newer agents make is they think I'll go all in once I've sold some homes. Like I'll start really taking my business serious once I've sold some homes. And what happens is they, it takes time to start selling some homes, right? And if they have that mindset, then they basically don't go all in for that whole time period 
right? And then they lose all that momentum, right? So if you could just say like, I start today, doesn't matter where I'm at. And I just need to be the person that's always putting stuff out there. And little by little, people are starting to see me as the person that's taking this serious. Then over time, it just builds, right? It's a snowball. And remember, like for those of you guys that are newer, um, people do not trust you yet as a real estate agent because they don't know that you are successful yet. They haven't seen you put in the work. So what's the fastest way for them to see you putting in work? Post content, right? Because you could be brand new day one. You just got your license today. And then you just say like, I'm going to post every freaking day. And in a month from now, they've seen me post 30 different times. They're now like, oh damn, like this guy's like on it, right? Versus like, I post once in a while. I post once every other week. I might share someone else's thing. You know, I don't do anything. And then what happens is they're like watching you and they're not really seeing anything happening, right? So the quickest way to uh, gain credibility with your audience, friends, family, the people who are watching you is to just go hard and like be the person that posts the most, right? So if you flip your mindset around, like I need to be the person that just, I'm like the mayor, like whoever follows me, I'm the freaking real estate guru. I'm going to like impress them. I'm going to out hustle everybody. I'm going to post the most. And like in the next few months, they're going to see me post so many times that it's like undeniable. Like I'm the guy they need to come to when they're ready to buy or sell. Right. That's the attitude you have to have. Right. And it took me a long time to think, to realize that, you know, cause I had the same reservations too. Like when I started putting content, I was like overthinking it too much. And then when you just realize it's not about like being perfect, it's just about being consistent. Right. It's about showing up, showing up, showing up, showing up, showing up, showing up. And then when someone's ready to buy or sell, cause that's not on your timeline, that's on their timeline. Right. Then if they've seen you consistently putting yourself out there, they always remember that you're the one they got to call. But the minute you let up and you stop putting yourself out there, they forget about you. And then that other guy who's always putting themselves out there, that's the one that they remember, right? So here's what happens. Some of you guys that are newer, the moment you're going to realize this is when you see one of your cousins or your family members buy a house with someone else. And you're like, Fuck, why didn't they come with me? And then you're going to look back and you're like, well, I haven't really put myself out there that much. But this guy is like always in their ear, right? And that was like a $20,000 check that I could have made. And that's when like, damn, like I need to get my shit together, right? I need to start putting myself out there. I need to make sure that any of my friends and family, if they're going to buy, they're going to at least give me a shot, right? That doesn't guarantee, here's the thing, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get the business, right? Because you still got to compete for it. There's multiple people that they talk to. But what posting social media does is it guarantees you at least get a seat at the table, right? If you're the one that's always putting yourself out there, when someone's ready, they're at least going to think like, hey, I'm going to talk to them and see what they have to say. And I might talk to this other guy too, and then I'm going to see who's the one that I want to do business with. But you will never have that opportunity just by getting a license, right? People will not come to you just because you have a license. They will come to you because they see you as the person who is the most consistent, putting themselves out there, giving value, showing their success, showing their grind, showing the before and after, showing the office. Like they're going to, if they, their perception of you is going to, is going to be like, that's the person to go to if you do all of those things. Right. And um, here's the thing is in business guys, like, especially in real estate, this is a requirement. It's not an option. It's no longer an option, right? Unless the only option, like, is that any of you guys have like thousands of dollars to spend every single month to like run ads and to do like billboards and mailers, like that's advertising, right? If you guys have like thousands of dollars to invest every single month to make sure people know who you are, that's an option. But I don't think most people don't have that. And if they do, they're not willing to spend it, right? Because that's a slow game. So the only other option is like you use what's free, which is social media is free. It just requires you to put yourself out there. Does that make sense, guys? All right. So um, hopefully I'm hitting a, a, a few points with you guys because it, like we, I can show you all this stuff. And then like if you don't get why you have to do it, then you're not going to do it. That's just the bottom line. Right. And I think that goes for, for everybody, whoever's watching this, right. Any, anybody in the industry. 
Okay, now let's get into some context, guys. Like, how do we come up with topics, right? Yes, question. Oh, no, no, I just, I was in, how do we get some topics? No, no, so I, that's what I'm gonna cover next. I'm gonna go into how do we come up with topics, right? How do we come up with topics um, with chat GPT? So the way chat GPT works is it basically pulls, from what I understand, like it pulls information from the internet and stuff like that. Um, and then it also can think, and I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm not the brainiac on that, I'll be honest, right? All I know is like, this thing to think for you, it's like really smart and it evolves and you can like tell it different things and it's gonna spit out good information. Um, but what I want to also give you the disclaimer is you should not be like coming up with something and then using it word for word, right? Because it is a computer at the end of the day, right? And you have to basically turn it into your own language the way you speak. But it can give you like all the content and then you just gotta say it in your own words basically, right? Um, because remember, like if you were to just copy and paste something, people are going to know like, dude, that, you don't, that sounds like a robot. You don't write like that. Right. Like generic. it sounds generic, right? It sounds like a computer, like a textbook wrote it, but I can take that whole thing and I can change it around and I can throw my own slang on it, or I can maybe phrase it the way I would phrase it. And then I use that idea and I put my own flavor and now I, I execute it. Right. So that's the thing when you're coming up with scripts and stuff, if you just read it word for word, it's not going to sound good. It's going to sound like someone else. And you want it to basically give you the outline and the bullet points and the framework. And then you have to say it the way you speak, right? Because that has to, has to come off genuine. So here's what you want to do. Anytime you use chat GPT, um, whenever you're going to come up with like a topic or something or uh, anything you're trying to do, you always want to tell it from what perspective you're trying to do this, right? You don't want to just say like, give me three topics. You want to first start off by saying, I am a real estate expert, right? Or I'm a real estate salesperson who posts content on social media because you want the chat GPT to know like from what voice or perspective the information should be coming from. So you have to like frame it. You have to set it up, right? It's the same thing. Like if I was trying to talk about like a different industry, like, um, like a legal matter, right? Like I would want to say like, I am an expert lawyer and then come up with these things, right? Because then it's going to speak the way a lawyer, a lawyer would speak, right? So you always want to frame it first. So what I would do is I would say, I am a um, real estate expert who creates social media content. Boom. That's my first sentence, right? Because now I'm telling J chat GPT, when you come up with this information, make sure you're doing it from someone who is an expert, basically that posts on social media. So that's step one, right? So you guys want to write step one is always frame it the way it's supposed to be framed so the information comes out accurate. Okay, and then the next thing is when we're trying to figure out what I'm going to use, like if you're making Instagram reels and you're trying to put out content, right? For content to be valuable, what must it address for something to be valuable to someone? Hot topic. A what? A hot topic. A hot topic is, is, is a good one, right? Like it can address something that's happening right now in the world and the news, something that people are talking about, right? What else? A hook. A hook is more like an attention grabber. But what I'm looking for, guys, is for something to be valuable to someone, it needs to address a problem or a pain point that they have, right? Because if I'm like, Mauricio, uh, my, hey, bro, like this is how you succeed on Bitcoin. And you're like, well, I don't care about Bitcoin. Like, what was that got to do with me, right? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so I could be spitting something that like nobody cares about. No one cares about. But if Mauricio was in the process of buying a house, right, which is who our target our target audience, right, the, the people we're trying to attract is people who want to buy and sell. And if we're in lending finance, right, if those people are trying to buy, sell, or finance, then we want to come up with things that are pain points for those people. So if I know Mauricio is trying to buy a house and he has very little down payment and I'm talking about something that addresses down payment, that's valuable to him, right? But if he's trying to buy a house and I'm talking about people selling their house, it's not so valuable to him, right? So you always got to remember that for something to be valuable, it needs to address a struggle, a problem, a pain point that people go through. And if you see most marketing, like, Think about marketing, right? This is all this is all marketing 101. If you look at like commercials, if you look at like weight loss, so let's talk about weight loss, right? That's a big industry, right? Weight loss. 
they always show the person that like is struggling uh, losing weight, right? Are you struggling to lose weight, right? They always show the person struggling, right? And they're just eating a bunch of hamburgers, right? It's like, it's, it's like exaggerated, right? Because they're trying to speak to someone who is struggling using, losing weight. So then the person that's struggling losing weight is like, their eyes are open. Like, yeah, it's me, right? Like I eat hamburgers at night, right? Me too, right? <laughs> um, it's, it's like um, you guys all get these ads where it's like, Real estate agents, leads. Like yeah. How do you get more leads and shit like that? Yeah, it's the same reason why advertising agencies like say, hey, do you need more leads? Because they know you're in real estate and they know a big problem for real estate agents is they don't have leads, right? Or lead generation is a big problem, right? So you need to speak to people who have a problem, right? If you speak to people who have a problem and you're the solution, well, then they're going to want to go work with you, right? But if you're just saying some stuff that doesn't address any sort of problem or issue or main idea, then you're not really speaking, connecting to someone, right? So what we want to do is we want to address problems, right? So I am a real estate expert who creates social media content. Um, and I'm going to ask it to create a video script for me, right? Create a video or create a social, I'm going to say short, right? Let's get really specific because if you're making an Instagram reel, it should be short, like less than a minute even less than 40 seconds is probably the best, right? Because people have a short attention span. So create a short social media video script. And I'm going to even go a step further, create 10 short social media video scripts that discuss solutions to problems that buyers, right? And you can get real specific if you want to just talk about buyers or whatever, or a specific thing you're trying to address, right? That buyers and sellers will face in 2023. I'm even telling it like the year, right? Because the problem like four years ago may not be the same problem today. So I want you to see how I'm getting really specific, right? Create a 10, create 10 of them, right? I want 10 different ones that I could choose from. You could say three, you could say four, whatever. 10 short social media video scripts that discuss solutions to problems that buyers and sellers will face in 2023, right? Enter. Bam. Here are 10 short video script ideas. Check this out. I like it's just spits them out for you. This is the part that's like, when you first see it, it's mind blowing. Okay. So let's see what it actually said, right? Let's go through these. Um, number one, remember, we're gonna, it's gonna take some work, right? Like you gotta fine tune it, right? Number one, are you a first time home buyer struggling to save for a down payment? Check out these creative ways to save money without sacrificing your lifestyle. So then what I could do now, I would say like, hey, that's a good one, right? Like, that's a good topic. I can copy this, right? Or I can take the idea um, and I can post it again. Now, remember, since, I are, since I'm on the same thread, I already told that I'm a real estate expert, so I don't necessarily need to tell it again, but I can copy this and paste this and then I can create another follow-up question to give me more content, right? So um, create a short or a social media video script for, and then I'm gonna just like erase some of this. First time home buyers struggling to save for a down payment without sacrificing their lifestyle. So create a, short, a social media video script for first time home buyers struggling to save or for a solution, right? To first time home buyers struggling to save for a down payment. Let me double check this, right? You got to read it. Without sacrificing their lifestyle. Damn, now I'm going to hit enter. 
Absolutely. Here's a potential video script. Damn. Robots are winning, guys. Right. So this is a this is creating a long one, right? I probably want a shorter one. So I probably got to go in and tell it to do a shorter one. Um, hope this helps. All right. So let's read it though, right? Check it out. Yeah. Camera opens, but check this out, right? This one, it's even more detail of like how the video will look, right? I, I wasn't even thinking about that, but it's one step ahead of me. That's why this thing is powerful. Camera opens on a person sitting on a couch in their living room, looking at their laptop and frowning. Narrator, are you a first time home buyer struggling to save for down payment? It can be tough to balance your financial goals with your lifestyle. Cut to a shot of the person looking through their bank statement with the calculator. <laughs> But don't worry, there are creative ways to save money without sacrificing your daily routine. Cut to a shot of a person sitting outside at a coffee shop holding a cup of coffee and smiling. For example, instead of buying coffee every day, you could brew your own at home or at the office. By making your own coffee, you could save up to 100 bucks a month, nice. right? Cut to a shot of a person uh, walking through a grocery store picking out ingredients. Another way to save money is by cooking at home instead of eating out. Not only is it healthier, but it's also a great way to save some cash. Right. And then the last one, it says, uh, when it comes to shopping, consider buying used or refurbished items, a uh, little creativity and some smart spending habits. You can save for a down payment without sacrificing your lifestyle. And when you're ready to take the next, next step, I'm here to help you find the perfect home. Let's make your home dreams a reality. Right. Wow. He said that to you. Fire. So what I would do now with this, right, is I would take this and then I would make it my own. Right. So I would want to do it like in a way that I mean, I could take the whole idea, but I want to act it out in a way that applies to me. Or maybe I'm not acting it out, right? This is like act like a whole scene. Maybe I'm just doing a video, like, and I'm taking the main concepts, right? Like, hey guys, a lot of people, you know, here's something I run into a lot. A lot of people are struggling to save money because they don't want to sacrifice their lifestyle. Here's like three different things you can probably do that maybe most people don't think of. Number one is like, we spend like tons of money on Starbucks. Instead of going to Starbucks every single day, like try brewing coffee at home. You probably save at least a hundred bucks a month, right? Yeah, you do, right? I, since I bought an espresso, oh, I don't really go to Starbucks that much, right? And then when I go to Starbucks, I'm like, damn, five bucks for this freaking coffee, right? Um, but you see how now I can take this and I can just speak to the audience. It doesn't necessarily have to be a video where I'm acting out a whole situation. I could just turn this into like a 40 second, like, hey guys, this is a problem that many people face. Here's a couple solutions that maybe you haven't thought of. And when you're ready, Hit me up. I'm here to help. Right? Did anybody's brain just go like right now? Like, <laughs> um, you know, so what I want to show you guys is that it's, this does all the heavy lifting for you. Right. And it's also going to think a lot more creatively than most of us would think on our own. Unless like you do video and like, that's your thing. You're like super creative. But most of the time, if it's like today, like we're doing content day today. Right. Who would just take this and make a video off this now, right? That's your, that's your content, right? DJ is going to shoot content for us today, right? Our in-house, uh, you know, videographer. And it's like, this is your script, right? So you can copy this onto a document, edit it, maybe boil it down to like a simple thing that you can look through, maybe with your bullet points. And then you're going to just record it in your own words, right? So you guys see how I took this framework, but then I said it in my own words, right? Hey, if you go to Starbucks, I recently bought an espresso. Now I'm saving hundreds of dollars per month. It still attacks that main point, right? Questions, guys, questions on this. Uh, I'm gonna show you another example. Um, let's see. So now I'm gonna go back to my 10 short ideas, right? So here's one. Is your home not getting any offers? Here's how to identify and fix the potential turnoffs that could be driving potential buyers away. So it's basically the problem is like the home is not getting offers, right? That's the problem. So now that I know what that problem is, I'm going to say create a short social media video script with solutions to uh, for home sellers not receiving offers. 
on their home. All right, let's see what it says. Bam, absolutely. Oh, here we go. So look at this one, guys. Um, I'm just gonna go through the main points, right? Camera shot of someone standing outside. This is like if you're acting out a whole video, but I would just take the, the key points. So are you trying to sell your home but not receiving any offers? That's a hook right there, right? It's like, hey, are you trying to sell your home? And you're not getting any offers? That could be your opening line of the video. Uh, and let's read through it. It can be discouraging, but there are a few things you can do to make your home more attractive. First, consider some small improvements to your home's curb appeal, like a coat of paint, landscaping, some minor repairs can go a long way. Make sure your home's clean, decluttered, and organized, right? Finally, consider staging your home with furniture and decor to create a warm and inviting atmosphere, right? With a little effort, you can make your home more attractive, potential buyers, and get more offers you deserve, right? That's basically what it tells you. So it tells you, make some improvements, right, to the home. Do some uh, cleaning up and decluttering and then staging your home, right? So those are your main three things. Now, you guys can get completely creative with this, right? You want to just shoot this video talking to the camera or you guys want to go to a property and like show an example of a nice property, right? While you're there and shoot the video and you can point out things like, hey, guys, check out this home. Look, it's staged. It's clean. When you walk in, like this is what you see, right? These are the problems that sellers face. These are some of the solutions that you guys could do. And then whoever is watching your social media content, if they're thinking of selling their home, you're giving them like some tips on what they need to do to prepare to sell their home, right? That's what this, this addresses. Um, here's the other thing, one more, and then we're gonna wrap up. Give me a topic, guys, anything. Uh, ADUs. ADUs. Uh, what about ADUs? Uh, What's the problem? Um, What's the problem people face when it comes to ADUs? Like, uh, does my house, can, I, can I build an ADU? Can I build an ADU in my home? That's, that's a great question, right? Um, yeah. So you could even just write, um, what does it take to build an ADU on your home in San Jose, right? What are the requirements what are the what are the requirements to build an ADU on your home in San Jose, California, and how much does it cost, right? Bam. Look at this. This one's like, this is good info right here. Some of you guys, like, this is info for you, like, you didn't even know about, right? So in San Jose, California, there's certain requirements you must meet in order to build an ADU. Here are some key requirements. Uh, you must have a minimum lot size, 5,400. ADU must not exceed 50% or 1,200 square feet, whichever is smaller. There must be a setback at least four feet from the property line, right? Uh, one off-street parking space must be provided. Additionally, there are specific design standards that must be followed, such as maximum, maximum high roof, pitch requirements, and window placement guidelines. As for cost, um, average cost is around 250000 However, we've seen ranging from anywhere from 150 to 450 right? So this is a lot of information. So what I would do is I would make it very simple to understand, right? Hey, guys, I get this question a lot. What does it take to build an ADU? Well, in San Jose, like there's a couple of requirements. Boom. Number one, like your lot size needs to be at least, you know, 5,400 around there. But keep it really, really simple. Don't get like too specific because remember you have like a 40 second, 45 second window. You don't want to like overcomplicate it. Um, your ADU can't be bigger than 50% of the existing living area or around 1,200 square feet. You got to be at least four feet from the property line and you have to have at least some parking. Costs can range anywhere from 150 to 450,000. It really just depends. And there's a little bit more requirements as far as style and height. 
If you guys have questions about ADUs, I'd love to point you in the right direction. Feel free to contact. That's my video right there, right? So I address the problem, right? Is a lot of people hear about ADUs. They don't know what it takes. I gave them some good information. And then I said, hey, if you have any questions, any more detailed questions, feel free to reach out. Can I take a photo of that? It's no, not, you're not going to take a photo. What you're going to do is, remember, I'm teaching you guys how to fish, right? This is important right here. And I'm glad you asked that. I'm teaching you how to fish. I'm not doing the work for you. Well, I, tried, I tried typing it in. Okay. Um, so remember, what I would do is log on the chat GPT, right, for the purpose of this training. I'm going to show you how to, how to fish, right? You got to go out there and fish for yourself, right? Um, because otherwise, this is pointless, right? This is giving you the framework, giving you the key. So you got to go out there and do it. So go on there, just copy the framework, what are the requirements, how much does it cost? Boom, it's gonna spit it out for you. And the best way for you to do this, guys, to be honest, is go play around with it, right? This is new, right? This, is, this just came out a couple of weeks ago. I've been on here maybe seven or eight times, just playing around with it. You can also do it from your phone. Yeah, you can log in from your phone. I actually, most of the time, this is, this is the first time I've done it from a laptop. All the other times I've been on my phone, right? It's that easy. So if I'm on the fly, like, all right, I got to record some video content because I know I got to put my brand out there. I know I got to promote myself to the public. What's my topic today? All right. What are the top 10 problems buyers and sellers face? All right. I like that one. All right. Create a video script on this one. All right. Boom. And now I just make it my own words, shoot the video with my phone, put it out there. And now I'm scoring those, well, scoring those brownie points with my audience. Right. Um, so guys. To sum it up, right? Confidence, we already told you. What is, how do you get confident? Repetition. Repetition. Jackie, you have a question? You could even use, I guess, like for email templates. Yeah. Email templates. This is just for video. This training today was how to create video. But you can use this for, like, let's say, like, you don't want to do video, right? Because some, like, you want to mix it up on social media, too. Sometimes you want to just throw photos as well, right? Like on Instagram. So... I'm, I'm now starting to mix my content up where I was just doing all videos, but then I realized like when I throw a photo, sometimes like I get a lot more engagement. So I'm going to do like video, video, photo, you know, video, video, photo, and mix it up. But then on my photos, I'll write like something really cool in the description. So I can come up with like something there, right? Maybe I put a photo of me, like in the office, like behind the computer. And then I write a whole description about like the grind of being an entrepreneur come up with a social media description for Instagram that talks about the, you know, the, the challenges of being an entrepreneur. It's going to spit this whole thing out. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to make it my own words, right? Video email templates, right? How do I, um, how do I email a client who has not been responding to me over and over, right? Put that in there, right? Um, anything. And then you can use this for whatever you want, right? Like how do I bake a cake? And then it's going to show you how to bake a cake, right? So, but once you know that this tool is there, then like, it's up to you to get creative with it and see how you're going to use it to your advantage. That's the big thing, right? This is the tool. Remember guys, this doesn't do the work for you, but it could do a lot of work for you, but it's really a tool, right? A tool is only as good as the person who uses the tool, right? So confidence comes from the repetition, doing it, failing it, doing it on your own. And then the topics, well, boom, well, I just showed you guys that there's endless topics that you can create. Um, so whoever's watching this, whoever's here in the training, there is no longer any excuse as to why you cannot do video. The only excuse on why you're not doing video going forward, or even putting yourself out there on social media is just because you are afraid of failure, right? And if you're afraid of failure, guys, you're in for a long, hard road in real estate because you will fail. You will get rejected. People will not show up to your appointments. People will ghost you. They'll go with some other realtor. It's part of the game. It's part of sales, right? So if you, if you entered the real estate industry, it should be because you're going to move past that failure and past that fear and go out there and make it happen, right? Like that's what you signed up for. So now it's on you to, to go, right? Any last questions, guys, before we wrap up?